I wanted to pick up on as well in the chat, Fiona sharing about using Austin's butterfly that you um, created, Ron, with students. I've done that with um, four, five, six year olds. As soon as I discovered it, I was like, oh, this has got so much rich language in it. Let's watch it with the children and um, pick out that language exactly like you shared. And watching that twice in a school year has the most immense impact if the children are ready to pick out that language and you use it and refer to it because it's such um, a great model of kind, specific critique. Um, so, yes, picking out that language and Austin, Austin's Butterfly is such a great resource for that. And, and children love it because it's children. You know, people just like me doing this. I can do it too. And then obviously that um, the finished product of seeing how much that butterfly is improved it's hugely motivating to children. Like I could do that too. Um, so I think for the piece of like what made reflection and feedback really meaningful for my young students, um, watching Austin's butterfly twice and unpicking it and using that language. We used to we had a display that we'd put above our whiteboard that said superpower learners say. And that was exactly what you were both describing. It was picking out learnish, language for learning that the children were saying. And then saying, why is this powerful and what impact could it have? And it's in their words. And again, like you were saying, Ron, because they were young children, they were always really, um, they just had a real way with words. <laughs> Came up with something you'd never expect them to have, you know, you wouldn't have come up with it as an adult, but it was in their speak. So it was more powerful. Um, so those were some of my thoughts around that. I don't know if there's anything you want to come back with before we go to the next question. Just yet yeah, quickly, just to insert my high school voice here. So forgive me, but everything you're referencing, Becky, with younger learners, let's just say learners, high school kids as well. You know, Austin's Butterfly with the younger years class. We just showed that to students in Mesa, Arizona as a provocation to get them ready for language that's kind, specific and helpful. And so we often look at practices and inquiry and feedback and these student centered protocols as great at the younger years, great at all years, aren't they great at all years. So I just wanted to insert that if you're in a different context, um, Austin's butterfly is a provocation. Fantastic for all years. Um, Becky, I can share a very sweet story. For those of you who know the Austin's Butterfly video, you might remember there's a particularly thoughtful young man. Uh, he's, he's a Sudanese refugee, Atak, and he is the very dark-skinned young man who says, um, not to be mean, but it, it's just not quite right. And then he comes up to the board to sort of explain himself. And later he says, he made a lot of progress. He persevered when he did that piece. You know, he's, you could see what a thoughtful young man he is. Um, we had him as the keynote speaker when he was a high school student at our national conference for Yale Education. He spoke to 1,200 educators, and he used Austin's Butterfly as a metaphor of how his own life can keep getting better if he's willing to listen to critique. He can become a better person and a better human being if he's willing to get advice from others about he could be a little better at this and a little better at that. He's now a university student and uh, a music major and sent me a photo of himself just um, a few months ago about how proud he is about his work. And it's just a beautiful thing to see that idea that the Austin's Butterfly thing could be about ourselves and our, our whole lives, that we can, we can keep getting better at who we are if we're open to getting feedback.